After everything that happened in the last episode, I don't know if this one being called Reunion makes me nervous or excited. What's up Dapper Squad, it's your boy Darius back at it again with Mushoku Tensei episodes 17 and 18. This one's called Reunion. The next one is called Separate Journeys. Uh, also a little nervous. Last episode we ended up getting to Millis, I believe the continent is called, and the new city. I forgot what it's called. But we're just going by our day-to-day -day activities, trying to earn money, get prepared for our continuing journey home, in which we ran across Powell and his search party. And upon a misunderstanding and us telling him our journey, he was very upset that we had that we didn't reach out or do extra work in order to find the other missing people of uh, Fatoa and our region back home, which I understand both sides, but I really don't think your son is the one to be upset at in this situation. It's just all around an unfortunate scenario. But with that being said, I, I think Rudy handled it very well. He's open to forgiveness, willing to talk to him again. He just knows this is just a little tensions are a little hot right now so I, I i'm down you know eris was consoling him shout out to them i'm excited to find out what's in this episode i gotta watch it i say we do it don't forget if you guys want early access or full length to this show and all the other shows i'm watching we are four episodes ahead on that patreon links are down in the description down below like always for you guys don't forget to subscribe and to click that bell so you guys always know when i post over here on the dapper channel follow all the social medias instagram twitch tiktok twitter all at dapper darius much appreciated y'all let's hop into these episodes mushoku tensei episodes 17 and 18 the first one is called reunion let's do this is that norn oh is that is this directly after the mana disaster they immediately got teleported and were so lost had no idea what happened i also love how we still don't know what that mana disaster was is that just like a natural thing like a tornado or an earthquake was that a man-made thing what was that jupiter looking planet about you know like a lot of questions so this was the start of their journey as well journeys with no food water safety shelter very rough especially with a child so this is how we slowly gotten a little bit of info slowly gathered a party slowly getting the word out of the people we're missing you can tell he's getting older time is passing his facial hair is starting to get more disheveled so in his disparity and his hopelessness throughout this whole event norn has been the only thing keeping him together it seems Truthfully so, and even with that, time is still passing, no results, but he's, he, yep. He's getting angrier and bitterer, drinking heavier and heavier. She's still wearing his cloak that he gave her, that's adorable. So, I still agree in which I think he's done a good job of supporting Norn and doing his best in terms of finding Zenith, you know, Aisha, Lilia, all that, but... He is getting way too drunk and does not need to be getting this mad at Rudy. I stick with that. Is that geese? Geese and the geese and the old man know each other. That's a good question, Geese. Pow, what were you doing at 11? Yeah, could we reflect? Yeah, as, as someone who was with them, ergo Geese, you know? It's a little more complicated than that, yeah. <laughs> Geese is just sticking with... He's like, yeah. So he's never even been to the Demon Con, and he's over here roasting Rudy. I did not know Geese was from there, though. Damn. Yeah, some of the monsters we ran into, damn. It's called the Demon Continent for a reason. And you're trying to make it seem like the Superb was the best thing you had? And you're trying to say he had it easy? Come on, Geese, put in a perspective for this man. Thank you. I don't like how he's internalizing the stuff, you know? Geese is really telling him how it is, and I appreciate that. 
That's my whole thing. He went through literally all this just for Paul to be. Oh, I was so mad and upset. See, Geese and me are the same, but that's why I gave props to Rudy for trying to give it a second chance. He's your goddamn son. Come on. You're both alive and well. Just be happy for that. Oh my god. Shouts out to Geese making my top five characters on the show right now. I think I think Geese was only spitting facts. He didn't miss throughout that whole conversation. He doesn't miss. He recognizes that voice. Eris is not happy. She will have a word with this man. This is technically her uncle, so. <laughs> this picks her up like it's nothing. I agree. Let's give him a minute alone. <laughs> Look at Eris. Oh, Ruiger, blunt but to the point. You may have your issues with him, but where are your issues going to be if he dies? Think about that. Shouts out Ruiger. Shouts out Eris, though, for defending her man unequivocally. He... Rudy realizes how... And I, I respect that for him looking at it from Paul's perspective. Like, yeah, he thinks, oh, yeah, he should have taken it a little more seriously, you know? And he definitely does feel truly sorry that he couldn't find it, you know? All vanished? So then... I wonder how Sauros was able to stay there because he didn't, you know, respond to it appropriately. So, what happened to Philip? What happened to Moms? What happened? It's a good bartender right there. He's been kind of listening a little bit. Damn. Right after I stopped going out. I mean, that's a lot of people, you know. You don't realize what drove him to this point, you know, of being a social shut and a social recluse. I would say so, but in your own context, it's not really, you know. Yeah, 100%, you know. He was just trying to be nice in his own way, but he never came by. Damn, you never leave the house. He definitely did. I definitely agree, and I respect that. This is some great introspection and self-reflection from Rudy. It's 100% agreed. What, are we going to have a father-son hug? See, who wouldn't that have been such a nice touching reunion last episode like this? That would have been so nice. See, that's one of the good things about living a previous life is you have double the reflection. You know, he realizes Powell's perspective, his own perspective. He's so empathetic, you know. This is great improvement on Rudy and Paul's character, both. Shouts out Geese, shouts out Rudy, shouts out Paul. Now, this is exactly what I wanted to see last episode. This is a real man letting it out right now for his son. That's a good bartender, too. He's been through his fair share of conversations, you know. Oh, 
お兄ちゃんにお別れの挨拶をしろやだはい。No more drinking from him. He's, he's motivated. Hell yeah. Just like his son. Let's have a strategy meeting. All in all, this was a fantastic episode, I gotta say. It actually makes this episode so much better. That last episode was the way it was, so. I like that. Shouts out to you, Mushoku Tensei. Shouts out to Paul. Shouts out, Rudy. Shouts out, Eris, Rui j e r d Geese. Oh yeah, that was good. That was well done. I'm like crying. All right, episode 18. This one's called Separate Journeys. Let's do this. Okay, friendly, honorable duel between this man who's an apprentice. He looks confident. I like this. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> We just got a whole <laughs> We got a whole bunch of、uh, confident people who just want to test their might, we shall say. Another ship. e r i s hopefully doesn't get seasick. Yep, she still does. Yep. That is a rough ocean right there. Choppy seas, to say the least. Uh oh, when they say turning point in Mushoku Tensei, it is not a good sign. <laughs> So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about Sylphie. Elaine as well. We gotta find the whereabouts of everyone. Yet, she was just with you over in the Demon Continent.、Uh, so, I don't, I don't know. And I saw her in the thumbnail of this episode, so I hope to see her again. Ugh, goddamn. What a beautiful starry night. Speak of Roxy. Yep, that's Geld. Damn. So when she was in that flashback and this was Horsey and Geld, it was them. That's crazy. Mm, that's funny. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. He got handled by a superb, though, and Rudy. Tell him. Tell him about how you got handled by a superb and Rudy. And she instantly gets nervous because she's thinking about the、uh, super. That's funny. He did say he has kids when he was begging for his life to Rui Jerd. That's what family is. So go see him. Oh, is that why they don't like her? Because they definitely did use telepathy when Rudy and everyone was there. That's interesting. But I wonder if we do go to her village if they will tell her about Rudy. Because I want her to know about Rudy. That's the big thing. You never know what will happen. Go make up with them. Let them know you're on good terms. Because you truthfully can't guarantee anything in life. 
Well, it's going to be super quiet when you really don't need to talk to each other. You know, you can just use telepathy. They're trying to use telepathy to talk to her. And as soon as they could tell she doesn't use telepathy, they look at her different and treat her like an outsider. I can understand why she'd have some sort of social anxiety or try to cut ties with this place. A feeling of alienation. Understandable. I get it. Living like that your whole life. But I do agree with, with your, your horse friend. I do think you should at least see your parents. Make sure everything's good. Hmm... Cast a little healing magic. That's a good first impression. But they're using telepathy to say thank you, whatever they may say. And I love the effect that they use for Roxy not being able to understand it. Because it's not like they're speaking a different language and she can't translate it. Literally, it's not clicking in her brain. Like, physically, it's just not coming through. Oh, it sounds like rocks just hitting other rocks. Let's see, now I get to hear Senku's voice again. I am excited. It's crazy how how young they look. That would actually be so dope to have an adventurer come back from an a, actual adventure and tell you stories about what actually happened. Immediately go back to telepathy and not talking. She instantly feels like she's left out, cannot do anything. I don't know. If I was her parents, I would try to go out of my way to try to talk to her, you know? I understand it. It's very rough. I also do wish Roxy would say it. Because I, I think, obviously, I don't uh, you know, I'm going to get, you know, just for a second, but... I think obviously her parents love her enough to where if they knew it bothered her this much, they would go out of their way to talk in front of her. But they've lived, she's 40, so they've lived, what, 80, who knows, 100, whatever many lives, or however many years it may be, only using telepathy as their main source of communication. They're obviously going to do it, w like, without even thinking about it. It's like second language. It's like they're literal talking, you know, like, we don't think about breathing. We just breathe, but that's what they do. But I don't know. I just, I completely, so I understand they're, side not just instinctively talking to roxy but i understand roxy's alienated feeling completely because this is all they do like imagine you living in a village or a town in a city and you not being able to hear anyone talk and it's i can told it's i can completely see where she's coming from I wish I could live that long, that'd be crazy, but at least they are promising to come, at least she's promising to come visit again. Aww. Shouts out, mama. <laughs> Aww. What were these from Roxy's childhood as well? Childhood storybook, her favorite dolls. I wouldn't say it's because of you. I feel like it was more like they felt heartbroken for you, you know? They missed you, at least your parents, more than you can even imagine. It's kind of like what Horse Boy at the Adventurer's Guild said, you know? You guys may fight, you guys may disagree, but they will do and will be anything for you, you know? She can't, oh, that's cute. Don't get me tearing up now, that's adorable. She thought they would be happier off without her, but realized, you know, they cared about her more than anything in the world. Get in there, Senku, come on. You gotta hop in the hug. That's cute. Seems like a little bit of a rough floor to sleep on, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do.
She does. And I respect her. Going to look for Rudy. This is what I was waiting for the whole time. Rudy. Rudy. Literally the person you've been looking for the whole time. Eris the mad dog, Rui Jerd, the soup herd, put two and two together that he's a part of Dead End. Come on, Roxy. Come on, Roxy. And she fell unconscious. She has such a big fear of the soup herd. I feel like Rui Jerd's going to be the hardest. Like, her, in person, is going to be the hardest to accept Rui Jerd. Even though I love Roxy. They're like, wait, he's like, what are you talking about? Wait, what are you talking about? No, no, not Rudy, no. I forbid it, you hear? Hell no. He already wanted to call me father-in-law. It's not happening. I will not let him step here. That's so cool. That's so cute. Little mother-daughter. That was funny. Now that's the real question right there, Roxy. Alina Lise. Okay. <laughs> yes, I agree. This woman is something else. Good. I like how both Roxy and Rudy had like a, a new resolve switch, you know? Like, number one priority for Roxy was finding Rudy. Number one priority for Rudy was escorting Eris. Now they're both like, okay, we have some sort of, not resolution, but opening to the situation at hand. Let's go save Zenith, Aisha, Lilia, because they need help. Overall, no action damn near whatsoever in these episodes, but both of these episodes were easily some of my favorite. Like, I loved the character development, and I loved everything in terms of relationship development introspection coming from roxy and rudy both fantastic characters both fantastic development especially from paul as well i need to give shouts out to him and that wouldn't have happened without geese i love the way geese put into perspective like yes you know like he might have said this to you but it was I, I love how it's just literally just looking at it from a different perspective is all you need to see how it could change you know and i love that geese really put it into perspective for him he's like he has a girl to protect. He has a dangerous, superb that he had to, you know, who could turn on him at any point. It's super hot. There are monsters. Um, and he's an 11 year old boy. Like, he really put it in. And it's crazy. And then Powell. And I, I loved getting Powell, that little montage of Powell and Norn coming or getting transported here into him turning from the Powell we knew to the Powell who's like a drunken bitter man you know so it really makes sense then for him to come out of it and that conversation they had at the bar with the old bar tender helping out as well you know like it was all in all that was such a fantastic episode and i love i love like i said the perspective but i love the pride in in which he said because it's very resemblant of that issue that he had in his previous life when he finally stopped going outside of the house due to his bullying and someone was always like man you had lived a life i wish i could be a social recluse like you and he overreacted not knowing the the details of how it affects him and how depressed he is because of it but when he had some self-reflection later he thought man i i overreacted he was just trying to cheer me up in his own way i'm going to apologize but he never came back for me to apologize and and powell went out of his way left his house in order to go do that and so powell's a better man than him and so because of that, he's going to be the better man as well. And they're both going to evolve and change from that. And that is that is some great character development right there. Absolutely. So shouts out to Pal. Shouts out Geese. Shouts out Roxy with her parents. Shouts out Rudy. But to get on to Roxy, I completely get where she is coming from, you know, to be feel alienated. And especially in such a tight knit community as well. It's not like you're in a big city and you can go and make new friends like this city or this village maximum what 100 people 200 people something like that so the fact that you can't speak with literally anyone but your parents and i can completely see why she would leave but coming back and seeing how much she meant to her parents and and everything and i really like the way her i forget his name but the horse adventurer that she used to hang out with with and geld back in the day you know he had now has a wife and kids and he understands it you know like no matter what he will be there he'll do whatever it takes for them 
And that scene with Mama Roxy and Roxy just starting to tear up and the whole flow. Oh, beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was so well done. So well done. But these were some fantastic episodes. Absolutely fantastic. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out that Patreon, early access, full length, all that jazz. Uh, follow all the social medias. Don't forget to drink water. Tell someone you love them. Be safe out there. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace.